Hello and welcome to this course on model predictive control. In this week, we are looking at certain practical implementation of linear quadratic control. Specifically, we started off with output feedback control and showed the separation principle. The linear quadratic Gaussian, uh, it involves using Kalman filter as the estimator and then using LQR as the controller. Uh, what separation principle tells us is that the combination of LQR and Kalman filter happens to be optimal in the stochastic sense for a linear system with epsilon and nu to be Gaussian white noise sequences. Thereafter, we discuss implementation of LQR for more practical problems of interest, uh, specifically set point tracking and or disturbance rejection problems. We now in this video are going to talk about the practical implementations of estimator. When we developed Kalman filter and LQG, the system that we considered was xk plus 1 equal to axk plus buk plus epsilon k and yk was cxk plus nu k. Okay. In this cases, epsilon k and nu k were Gaussian white noise sequences. Okay. Then several of you have asked in the class whether the assumption of Gaussian and white noise is it a restrictive assumption and yes indeed it is a restrictive assumption and therefore in this uh, video we are going to start talking about how to relax those assumptions. Let's say we have another sequence delta which is going to be equal to let's say be multiplied by epsilon k okay then this delta is also going to be zero mean Gaussian white noise sequence. The covariance of delta is going to be nothing but delta delta transpose which is equal to be expectation of epsilon epsilon transpose be transpose equal to be r be transpose okay so this is something that you have already looked at in your assignment for the previous week uh, however before going further i wanted to recap this now in this particular video we are going to talk about an important topic which is going to build the foundation for the next video and that is disturbance modeling. The first concept that we are going to talk about is stationary noise or stationary process. Okay, A stationary stochastic uh, process is a process where the probability distribution function is invariant with time okay what that means is that the, the various the signal might be correlated in time however the probability distribution does not change with time the other process is called weakly stationary expectation Weakly stationary are the processes where just the first two moments do not change with time. Uh, the rest of the moments, the higher moments uh, such as the skewness or kurtosis could change with time, but only the mean and the variance will not change with, with time. Okay, And non-stationary are processes that are not stationary in nature. For the purpose of this course, we are going to consider random walk. type sequences for non-stationary process. So let's now talk about stationary processes and before we do that, we will just talk about what is white noise. Okay, white noise is a noise that is uncorrelated in time. 
in addition to that let's also make an assumption that this is a zero mean uh, sequence so expectation of epsilon is equal to zero okay and expectation of epsilon k this is going to be equal to zero if tau not equal to zero and it is equal to r or let's call it r epsilon if tau is equal to zero. What the other type of stationary noise as we had discussed was colored noise and without discussing much more about colored noise we will talk about what is known as a spectral factorization theorem. Any stationary process or uh, what I would, what I would I would put it in the context of this course is that any colored noise can be expressed as a uh, white noise that passes through a linear process. What that means is, let's say we have a, a, a signal called let's call it DK, and if we write this as uh, HQ multiplied by epsilon k where hq is a discrete time process then the d that you get is colored noise okay the third type of noise the, again something that we have already talked about is integrating white noise okay and eta k is just going to be equal to summation epsilon i i equal to 0 to k okay and in addition to that what we will say is that any other uh, noise that is non stationary we would we can represent it in the form of dk bar is going to be equal to another h bar q multiplied by eta k okay so this is what uh, are the two station non stationary processes okay so now let's look at at the transfer function hq or h bar q let's say x dk plus 1 or maybe a more standard notation x w k plus 1 equal to a w x w k plus dw epsilon k and dk is going to be equal to cw xwk okay so this is going to be uh, the transfer uh, the state space representation of a no a stationary noise and the noise is stationary if a is stable that means all the eigenvalues of a lie within the unit disk okay so this these are the various concepts that we are we are going to use in uh, in the discussion further okay now let me just go on to matlab so this is the overall code that i have written and we are generating white noise sequences for 1000 time steps so epsi is a white noise sequence okay the integrating white noise we can just use cumulative summation in order to get the eta okay and the colored noise i have taken two colored noises in the, in one case we have the transfer function is 1 divided by 2s plus 1 okay and in another case the transfer function is going to be uh, mm, yeah, you could say uh, the transfer function is going to be uh, Z inverse divided by 0 0.6 Z inverse plus 1. 
Okay, so those are the two transfer functions, and we are going to generate white noise, integrating white noise, colored noise one, colored noise two. Okay, so let me run this. So these are how the sequences are gonna look uh, over here. So the first sequence that you see is a white noise sequence. Okay. The second sequence is the integrating white noise sequence. Okay. These two are colored noise sequences. These colored noise sequences are correlated in time, but they are still stationary, which basically means that the overall uh, distribution is not changing with. So okay, so you saw the various sequences which include included a white noise and integrating white noise and two examples of color noise. Okay, so equipped with this, we should now be able to look at various other uh, processes. Okay, now before we end, the final word on this is if we have an integrating white noise sequence D bar. We can take a difference. So, if we take a difference delta eta, this is going to be nothing but epsilon k. Okay, and delta d bar is nothing but h bar q multiplied by delta eta k and therefore epsilon k okay so what would strategy we are going to do in the next video is a combined strategy for how to treat white noise how to treat colored noise how to treat integrating white noise and how to treat uh, uh, sorry uh, and how to treat integrating white noise that passes through a particular linear process. In case of the first two cases, we are going to use the disturbance model. We are going to build a disturbance model in order to uh, handle this. Uh, in, in the last two cases, in addition to building the disturbance model, we are going to also difference the overall system. Okay, so that is going to be the strategy for the next video. So thanks and see you in the next video. Bye.